Thank you, uh, Morgan. Two of the major forces affecting the U.S. economy at play in today's data, the slowdown in manufacturing, in part from the trade war uh, and global economic weakness, but the surge in housing linked to the decline in interest rates and all of it, both sides, affected by the weather. Q4 now tracking 2.1 percent, and that's unchanged, and we'll explain why in a second, but Q1 uh, the weakness is still in the forecast at 1.6 percent. Economists said they raised their forecast because of this blowout housing number, up 17 percent, helped by low rates and warmer weather in December. But they lowered them because of the weak industrial production report showing some strains in manufacturing, but also lower utility out due to warmer weather. Amherst Pierpont, uh, along with Action, up 2.4 percent. That's their fourth quarter estimate tracking Oxford and the Texas, of which we have a gentleman coming up shortly on this at 2-2. B of A at 2, Goldman Sachs at 1-9, and Atlanta Fed bringing up the rear there, 1.8%. Good news, we started the quarter with rapid update at 1.5, so it's been trending the right way. But the 1.6 for this quarter, that could be a little more solid because the halting of production of the 737 MAX, as you know, Morgan, is going to shave maybe as much as a half a point off of GDP. And it's going to be tough to get that back, even from stronger housing numbers. Yeah. Is there, is there any way to sort of factor in what that's going to look like as we go into 2020 as well? Well, that's for the fourth quarter that I'm talking about. No, first, for the first quarter that I'm talking about. It's going to take about a half a point off, but it should come back as they bring the 737 MAX production Got back it. online. When that will be... Um, I guess take the month that Boeing says and add six months because they've been off <laughs> continuously. That's a joke. How that's much, uh, Larry Kudlow said that uh, the trade deal will add at least a percentage point to GDP. You buy that? I have not seen any estimates other than or heard them from the administration. There's nobody in the private sector that's saying there's a percentage point. What the best I've heard. I'm pretty sure and, that's and what he said. I, I, I would not disagree yeah. with you that yeah. he said that. But but what I've seen is that. They've estimated that tr the trade war will take away 0.2 percent this year, and they've this year, have that. In 19, sorry, 2020. In 20. They've have that, so maybe a 0.1 detraction. The trouble for the economists is they start from the standpoint of the tariffs being in place. You only got rid of one half of one round of the tariffs that you put in place. So a lot of that negativity that comes from that. And the disruption to the supply chains, they also do not foresee a big rebound in confidence that's going to be a big rebound in CapEx. If they're going to be wrong, Tyler, that's where they're going to be wrong. But I think that, the, 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 and I want to bring in uh, uh, Joe Lavornia here in just a minute. Why don't we just bring in Joe Lavornia? Thank you, Tyler. Welcome, welcome. He may have a better here. estimate. Yeah, well, I would we'll, say we'll since about it's, you got your wallet on the table know, here. You big, don't it's, a, it it's an old wallet. It's, it's a big wallet. There's no money in it. I got money in my pocket. Anyhow, um, I think that what Kudlow was driving at was the volume of purchases that are implied or codified in this in this trade agreement and it's several hundred billion dollars when you throw in manufacturing yeah. agriculture and if the United States can can generate that kind of supply maybe it would add the to GDP a lot. sentiment aspect that Steve alluded to and Larry's very well aware of is very important the animal spirits are key and it seems to me a couple of things have happened recently. Number one, the equity market, and as Larry likes to say, some of the growthier sectors like uh, financials, industrials have done extraordinarily well. That is very good for corporate sentiment. That will help lift CapEx. And uh, certainly housing looks good. Manufacturing, to me, Tyler, is close to a bottom. I've been saying that the last mm -hmm. month or so. That will give us growth. And if sentiment improves, growth could be three. I know that sounds... Aggressive. I think the street is way too pessimistic on the 2020 outlook, way too pessimistic. I'm, curi I'm curious, though, why you think manufacturing is hitting a bottom, because, I mean, just today we had a number of industrials reporting earnings, uh, Fast and All, CSX, uh, Expeditors International. Sure. Didn't necessarily suggest, especially in, in Q4, can, that there was I a bottom. Can I add a footnote, Morgan? The, 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 the freight and the rail data speak of economy and recession. It is so bad, that freight yeah. and rail data. It's sure. terrible. Well, look, the ISM says the sector is contracting. I'll give you two reasons why I think it's recovering. The less obvious one is the following. If you look within the internals of the ISM, when production runs below inventories, that means people have overcut. And that speaks to the natural recuperative power of the factory sector. In fact, that spread, which I alluded to as negative, has happened four other times in the last 40 years. And two of them were during the last recession. So I'm going to pick a bottom and say we're recovering. That's one answer. The other is if you look at all the different Philadelphia Fed surveys, which Steve is very familiar with, 
virtually all the six months components, six months forward activity components, have bottomed and have turned up. So to me, when the manufacturing sector recovers in 2020, CapEx, which is a big part of manufacturing, goes with it. Joe, we don't disagree very, very much. I think it's a matter of timing and degree. Um, I think what we have is an initial wave of weakness that we have to endure in part because I think there's still bad stuff to work through the economy from the, from the tariffs. I think they only took effect in September on a big and important chunk of them. Uh, and they're still out there on some $360 billion worth of Chinese imports. That's one. Uh, and then the second thing is I think we get some recovery in confidence. I think it's a back half story. You may do three and two. Can, can I talk three, about the tariff the, side? Because you raise go a very ahead. good point. And, and look, to me, the tariffs have to because they're not all on final goods and services. The tariffs need to be measured in, rel in relation to the total size of the economy, which isn't 22 trillion in nominal GDP, it's 40 trillion. So 600 billion-ish on 40 trillion is just peanuts. It just, to me, doesn't matter, which is why I've argued from the get-go, the slowdown we had in the past was over-tightening a monetary policy. The Fed responded, they corrected their mistake, and voila, the outlook is so better. So let me let, let close with two quick questions. Number one, Joe, is now a good time to buy stocks or not? You're asking a fixed income guy that. There's no recession, so yes. All right. Let's turn to Greg Ipp's article yesterday in the Wall Street Journal, where basically his thesis was that the Federal Reserve and other central banks have lost their power to influence uh, economies. They're, I believe that's the head of it. The era of Fed power is over. Prepare for a more perilous road ahead. He made various arguments within it. Do you agree? Look at the Fed's balance sheet in the equity market. Look at the housing market. No, I don't agree. Because they're able to add to that, sure, even, that, if, add even if they have limited ability to lower rates farther. Steve? The two most powerful things that have happened to the stock market in the last several months has been the change in the Fed's balance sheet and interest yep. rates and the extra December cut that caused the, 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 the market to fall off. There is no evidence that the Fed has lost power. It looks more powerful than it ever was.